So today we're going to be looking at how Cubase handles project folders and a couple of best practices to take in mind specifically for beginners getting into Cubase because I think it handles projects a little bit differently to some of the other DAWs out there. So the golden rule here, I guess, is to just create a new folder every time you make a project and just make sure that, you know, all of the files for that project go into that folder and you should be good to go. Um, but there's just a couple of things that I want to show you guys which may, might make your life a little bit easier for, you know, just keeping your project clean and all sorts. So if we want to start a new project in Cubase, generally um, the way to do so, um, your Steinberg Hub pops up and then let's click Create over here. So by default, uh, we get a prompt asking us to choose the project folder. But one thing that uh, is not very obvious specific specifically to newcomers is th that, you know, to just keep things organized it helps a lot to just create a folder here let's say for example we'll call this project one it's the first project we're ever going to make and then we dive in there and click select folder over here so now essentially what we've done is we've told cubase that all the information for this specific project is going to be saved into that folder so why is this helpful specifically because if you're creating multiple versions of a track um, you can keep them all within a single folder. All the samples and everything like that are within that folder. So when you're sharing it or moving it or backing up, uh, it just becomes a little bit easier to keep everything within that folder. So what I'm going to do here is let's just go file, save as. And you'll notice that uh, within our project one, it's created a folder for audio. And what that is, is essentially it's going to allow you the ability to save all your samples and stuff like that into the project folder. And that just makes life a lot easier when you wanna create backups or when you wanna you know, send the project to somebody else or something like that for housekeeping purposes, having every sample and stuff within the project definitely helps. So what we're gonna do here is let's just go ahead and call this project one. And what we wanna do is just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna find a sample and let's drag this in over here. It's a kick drum. And you'll notice that uh, when you drag samples in in Cubase, you get this prompt over here. And essentially what this prompt is asking is whether we want to copy the sample into that audio folder that I showed you guys earlier. And with stuff like kick drums and actual drum samples and that kind of stuff, 100% of the time I want to copy it into the working directory. Um, even if we're cycling through different samples we may or may not use it i will copy it to the working directory and there's a function that i'm going to talk about in a later video um, about how to clean up unused uh, files and that kind of thing so generally speaking you want this tick to be on sometimes by default when you install cubase for the first time it's not and then you might create a whole project you know something might happen to your computer and when you back it up you have none of the samples and you've got to kind of recreate your project from scratch which is a bit of a nightmare so this is definitely going to save you a lot of uh, uh, a lot of tears in the future so we've got our audio sample that we've copied into the project here um, if we jump over to our folder we'll actually notice here what it's done is it's created several folders one with the actual sample and then a snapshot of the sample which is i think is just the waveform um, and then various kind of peak images and stuff so this is essentially all of the data needed so i mean i could for example copy this project to somebody on a flash drive and they could open it up and it's going to be the exact same samples and everything intact so that's pretty cool um what i also want to show you guys quickly is cubase's pool what this is is this is all the media inside the project that's uh, currently being used so let's say for example we delete this um, audio file and let's just find a different kick drum and drag it in here also copy that to the audio and uh, we don't want that one let's choose a different one uh, no we don't want that one i'm just you know just for an example sake just throwing a bunch in here and let's just go to the pool quickly Control p is the shortcut for pool and you'll see here that under this column used it's only this one that's used However, these three are still in, in our audio folder. And you know, when the project starts to get bigger, these things can start to take up space. Okay, maybe not a small kick sample, but this is just for 
uh, example purposes. So one way of removing all those folders would be to create a backup project. If you click File, and just under Export, you've got an option there to Backup Project. Then what you can do is you can actually create a, let's say for example, Project 1 Backup. Under this prompt over here, we have the ability to select minimize audio files and remove unused files. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a copy of the audio project. And it's only going to give us the files that are actually in use in the project. I think there's two there for some reason, but you guys get the picture. It might need to, it could be that maybe there's one in the pool still. Um, anyway, so it's a way of cleaning up a project. Um, especially if you have like a large audio, uh, if you if you have a large project folder that you're needing to send to somebody, um, that might be one of the reasons that you've got like a bunch of samples and stuff loaded that you might not be using loops and all sorts of stuff like that. Okay, let's look at how I set up some of my favorite preferences um, in Cubase. So for those advanced uh, Cubase users who have been watching my videos, this might be something that you've picked up. Uh, a couple of these preferences that I've kind of purposefully left uh, unedited because I've been planning this video for a little while. I just hadn't quite got all my ducks in a row to kind of do the entire series in, in one go. Um, so yeah, um, anyway, let's look at a couple of these preferences. So next to file, you've got obviously your edit menu. If you click edit and then right at the bottom there, you've got your preferences. The really cool thing about Cubase is there's so many setup options that you're able to kind of get it to work in almost any way you want to. You can kind of fine tune it to work uh, specifically how you want it to. So you can get a lot of these options to kind of fit into your workflow. So a lot of these might not be applicable to you, but I just want to show you guys because it might, you know, speed up your guys' workflow. So I actually get uh, quite a few questions about this um, regarding right click. And, you know, often in my videos, I will say, uh, in Cubase, right click on the MIDI or right click on the audio and click on bounce or render or something like that. And often when people are following along, they don't get the same results because when they right click, they get this pop up toolbox. And so there's two ways of, uh, there's two workarounds for this. You can either hold control and right click and then you get the actual right click options. I believe somewhere around Cubase 7, they changed this. Um, so what I do usually is I will just untick this box over here, pop up toolbox on right click under editing tools, pop up toolbox on right click. And so what happens now is it basically swaps the option. So if you right click, it gives you the ability to render and all sorts of stuff like that. And then if you hold control, it gives you uh, the mouse cursor options. So yeah, just a little workaround for that. I thought that might be helpful to include here. Um, seeing as I do a lot of, uh, get a lot of questions regarding that. So another thing that's changed recently, uh, I think it was in Cubase 9 or 10, is the lower zones. So some people don't actually like the, the lower zone workflow. I kind of enjoy it because I do have a bit of a bigger screen. But for those who don't have a bigger screen, it can be a little bit annoying because um, it kind of minimizes, for example, like your arrangement view in favor of something that you're working on. Whereas in previous Cubases, you would get a pop-up. So if one example is like when I click here, I get this uh, MIDI options. I kind of enjoy it because it's just keep things a little bit more uh, workspace friendly, um, something I'm going to get into in a future video. But um, there is a, a way of quickly changing this. Uh, I don't actually leave this setting on, but I thought it's just uh, good to uh, include in this video if anybody does want to change that option. It's you just uh, change this to double click opens editor in a window. So like I said, I prefer the low zone thing, but if you've got smaller screens, uh, that's one way of fixing that issue. So another really cool feature is the ability to either randomize the track color or use previous track color uh, plus one. So this helps to, you know, speed up the workflow in terms of quickly being able to tell which tracks are on which lanes and stuff like that. Um, so let's say for example, go like that and now add an instrument track. You'll see it's now red, and then let's say add a, another instrument track. Now this one is orange. Now let's say add a, another instrument track, etc., etc. So now if we add a clip, 
you'll see that the clip corresponds to the color of the channel. And often in Cubase, if you, you know, say for example, we've got a color here, then it doesn't apply it to the channel. So it's a little bit annoying uh, workaround. So just setting it to automatically assign that color um, or not being able to, you know, set the preferences how you want them. Really, really cool. Anyway, cool. And then the last uh, really helpful uh, little thing is under transport. So this return to start position on stop. This is a very handy little thing. Um, what it does is when you press spacebar, it returns to where the song started. So this is particularly handy for, you know, editing those uh, sort of parts over and over again. Um, check this out. I find specifically for like putting in drum beats and stuff like that, it's particularly helpful. A big thanks to IDM Mag, proud supporters of the dance music scene and my channel. Thank you.